Every year at this time, you get the pundits whining about too many bowl games, too many 6-6 six and six and 7-5 and five teams being given postseason berths in these mid-level to lower tier games. But you know what, guys? If the games are entertaining, if they're exciting, that's all that matters. And it all comes down to whether or not the matchups are right when they're presented to you in the bowls. I mean, look at yesterday's action. On Thursday, you tell me. The game, the pinstripe bowl at Yankee Stadium between Kansas State and Syracuse, and then last night's Music City Bowl where I gave you a free winner on North Carolina against Tennessee, the double overtime win by the Tar Heels. Those two games match any that you saw in terms of excitement during the regular season because the pairings were right. You can go back last week to the Southern Miss-Louisville game, and there's been a number of others throughout this college bowl season. Missouri and Iowa a couple of nights ago that have been nip and tuck affairs that have been entertaining from a fan standpoint. And again, it all comes down to the pairings. Listen, Nebraska-Washington last night in the Holiday Bowl, clearly that was a bad pairing. A stupid pairing when you think about it. Of course, the Cornhuskers didn't want to play obviously in the Holiday Bowl for a second straight year. They didn't want to have to play an opponent they beat the hell out of earlier this year, that being Washington. It was a flat, unmotivated performance by the Huskers that they should be embarrassed about. But that's been more or less the exception rather than the rule, because even the SMU-Army game was a competitive one yesterday. As Army jumped out to the early lead, SMU came back and made it a ball game. So, it all comes down to the pairings. Hi everyone, Al DeMarco here, and this is going to be your New Year's Eve Friday video report. First of all, best wishes to you all for a happy, prosperous, and hopefully profitable New Year. Please be safe tonight if you're going out and partying. Uh, you know, got to make sure you watch tomorrow's video report, right? Hey, I've got another uh, money-saving coupon offer for you guys. It is Bowl 25. Bowl 25. This will save you $25 off any single purchase you make at any site today uh, or um, for any handicapper today at the site. You don't necessarily have to buy my place. $25 off. And that coupon, guys, is good either today, tomorrow, or even Sunday for the final day of the NFL season. Once again, it is Bowl 25, the word Bowl and the number 25, no space between them. Enter that in your shopping cart when prompted, and you will save $25 off of any single purchase price here today, tomorrow, or Sunday. Now, I'm going to break down three of your bowl games today. I'm going to look at the Meineke Bowl, uh, the Sun Bowl, and the Chick-fil-A Bowl matchups. Now, I'm not going to touch the game, the Liberty Bowl, between Georgia and Central Florida, because for me, that is going to be another rare 15-dime release. I am two for two with these plays so far in the College Bowl postseason. Tulsa, a 10-point dog, outright by, I think it was 28 points, over Hawaii on the road. And just a couple of nights ago, a 10-dime winner on the Alamo Bowl clash between Oklahoma State, laying 4.5, winning 38-10 to 10 over Arizona. 15-dime release on Georgia and Central Florida going for me today. Same 15-dime plays, and I am 32-19-1 in the NFL the past three years. Same 15-dime plays in college basketball and the NBA that I am 15-5 and five with the past two seasons combined. Now, the free picks, uh, I believe I've now won 17 out of 20 free football picks in college uh, after cashing last night with North Carolina. It didn't look good with a minute and a half to play, but what an incredible finish by the Tar Heels. Boy, and I'm telling you, a lot of guys at the site had Tennessee last night, and it was one of those head-scratching games, you know, when it's done, you go, eh. I mean, you had the game and you lost it. You saw how it played out. First game I want to talk about is the game at 7.30 Eastern Time at the Georgia Dome, where South Carolina returns to the scene of the crime, that crime being the ambush that they endured at the hands of Auburn in the SEC Championship game about three and a half weeks ago. And tonight the Gamecocks are a three-point favor against Florida State, a team that lost in the ACC Championship game against Virginia Tech. So you have the runner-ups in the SEC and the ACC playing in Atlanta tonight. Uh, you know, this Florida State team had a turnaround season uh, in the first year with Jimbo Fisher at the helm. Improved defensively tremendously. Uh, great pass rush, led the nation in sacks. Uh, gave up 10 fewer points a game than they did a year ago. Um, you know, this South Carolina team, uh, very strong offensively. Steven Garcia, 
Uh, a steady year at quarterback, even though he was pulled a couple of times by Steve Spurrier. Gee, Spurrier pulling quarterbacks. What a surprise there, huh? Uh, but really excelled with Marcus Lattimore at running back. Uh, the freshman just had a phenomenal season this year. They came with Florida State. They have a running back by committee approach that was very productive, especially early in the season, tailed off later in the year. Uh, but the key always comes down to Christian Ponder. He missed two of the final four games because of elbow problems. He's had about three and a half weeks now to rest and rehab that elbow. is scheduled to start here tonight. Uh, it makes picking the side of this game very difficult, uh, especially with South Carolina just a three-point choice. But I think that you have to look at the total in this game. It's sitting around 54 and a half points, and I can see both of these teams easily scoring in the 30s here this evening. So again, I would take Florida State and South Carolina to go over the posted price for your freebie in that one. As far as the side, I'll tell you what, it, it's too hard to call. I really don't have an opinion because I can see this game going either way with the great unknown being how healthy Ponder's elbow truly is. Now, we go to the mid-afternoon clash in the Sun Bowl. El Paso, Texas, where Miami of Florida lane two and a half against Notre Dame. Now, Miami, of course, fired Randy Shannon after their season-closing regular season loss to uh, South Florida, a game that marked the return of Jakari Harris at quarterback after missing three games earlier with a concussion. New coach, Al Golden, the coach in waiting hired from Temple University. However, this particular game will be coached by for Miami by their offensive line coach, uh, Jeff Stoutland, today. Um, the key in this contest is going to be the quarterback play as well. Listen, Ja'Cory Harris, when he's good, he's good. And when he's bad, he's really bad, guys. I mean, you know, in five wins this year for Miami, he had 13 touchdown passes and five interceptions. In four losses, he had one touchdown pass, seven interceptions. Now, Notre Dame suffered a bunch of uh, injuries late in the season, including losing their quarterback. Um, so they went with the freshman, uh, Tommy Reese, who quarterbacked them the three consecutive victories against Utah, Army, and uh, USC. I discount that three-game winning streak. Listen, Irish hosted the Utes in South Bend a week after Utah got destroyed at home by TCU. It was a letdown game. Uh, they took on an Army team that... I don't care that Army beat SMU yesterday. Army simply wasn't that good. No passing attack. It was a team that was primed to be beaten by the Irish, and it was. And the USC win? You know, Matt Barkley watched that game. It was Mitch Mustaine that was quarterback in USC that night, and it was played in a torrential downpour. USC could have easily won that game if not for turnovers. So I like... Miami here, I think it's a cheap price at two and a half. If it goes to three, you buy down the half point and you ride the Hurricanes in this one. Finally, the uh, first game on today's board, tough game to call, the Meineke Car Care Bowl in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, where Clemson, of course from South Carolina, laying six points in this one against South Florida. You know, both of these teams struggled mightily offensively this season, so why not take the under? Forget about who's going to win the game. I don't know if Clemson is good enough to beat anybody by more than three points, but both of these teams play very good defense. And at the same time, I'm not sure that South Florida has enough offense to stay close within that six-point number. So, look at the total. It's 40 and a half points. And why but the trends? Do you realize South Florida or Clemson has stayed under the total in eight straight games and 10 of the last 11? Meanwhile, South Florida has stayed under the total in four straight games and eight out of 10 as well. Eight out of 11 on the season, just to be fair. Uh, you know, you've got a Clemson defense that gives up 18 points a game, a South Florida defense that gives up 20 points a game. Neither team can run the ball effectively. Both teams have quarterbacks, South Florida with B.J. Daniels, B.J. Daniels, and uh, Clemson with uh, Kyle Parker uh, that struggled this year. Uh, Daniels, 12 interceptions versus only 9 touchdown passes. Parker this year, 12 touchdown passes versus only 10 interceptions. You know, so neither one of them put points on the board. Again, I would play the under. Don't forget, guys, your coupon code, again, is BOWL25, and I will catch you early on Saturday morning by 10 a.m. Eastern Time as we break down all your New Year's Day bowl games for you. Good luck, everybody, and a safe and happy New Year's Eve to you as well.